Hi, this is Squat. And in this video, I want to tell you about the respiratory system, big picture. So let's start from the heart. Your body uses a lot of uh, things and they spit out carbon dioxide and they use up a lot of oxygen. So you have a low oxygen amount and blood will carry this thing into your right atrium. Right atrium will kick this to the right ventricle and the right ventricle will send this blood to the lungs and this vessel that sends the uh, low oxygen high carbon dioxide blood to the lung is called the pulmonary artery and the the volume of the pulmonary artery is overall about 70 milliliter. Okay, so when the arteries go to the lung, there will be a lot of oxygen lung, and this oxygen will go into the pulmonary artery capillaries, and uh, a lot of carbon dioxide in the blood will come out, and the freshed up blood will now go back to the heart. Same thing happens on the other side as well. And this going back is going to take this blood to the left atrium. Left atrium sends it to the left ventricle, and the left ventricle will kick it out to aorta and aorta is going to take it to the rest of the body. Um, the lung is getting blood from this pulmonary artery for exchanging of the gas but the lung itself needs some fresh oxygen and nutrient to function. So there's actually another branch that goes from aorta to the uh, right lung and also the left lung that supply this rich oxygen low carbon dioxide blood just like the blood that goes to the rest of the body and this is the bronchi branch so overall you have the pulmonary artery that go to the lung for exchanging of the blood and you have this bronchi artery that go to the lung to supply energy and gas for the lung now let's talk about the oxygen and carbon dioxide first oxygen about 98.6 percent of them is on red blood cells. So this leaves only about 1.4% of oxygen dissolved in the blood. Carbon dioxide is a little bit different. 70% of the carbon dioxide is in the blood in the form of uh, HCO3 minus. 10% of carbon dioxide is in the blood and 20% of them is uh, actually attached to molecules in this carboxylic acid residue. Let's now talk about the lung. Here, gas exchange happens. New gas must come, old gas must go out. Now let's track this path. So this is your nasal pharynx, this is your oral pharynx, here is your larynx, and this is your trachea. And the trachea starts to branch right side of the lung, left lung. Now this one branching point, it's the branch zero. And uh, the lung will keep branching. It's gonna go from branch zero all the way to branch 16. So here branches are thinner and smaller. And then it's going to go from branch 16 even more to branch 23, where now the branches are so thin and so many. Um, this whole path from your nose to branch 23 have different structural names. This thicker pipe is bronchi. And then as the pipe gets thinner, they become bronchiole. And then bronchiole has two parts. The part that goes up to branch 16 and the part that goes from branch 16 to branch 23. All these is called dead space because there's no air exchanging structure there. And the size of this is about 150 milliliter. But all of these is called the respiratory space. This is because after branch 16, you start seeing structure for gas exchange and these are alveoli. And alveoli is uh, not circular, but octahedral structure. And you have these super thin epithelial cells lining the surface of alveoli. And blood vessel can come and leave. And these blood vessels also have very thin endothelial cells. So blood that is not that good in oxygen, but a lot in carbon dioxide. Um, let me bring that in from here. This one is going to come in and uh, here are the red blood cells. The thickness of this um, capillary is about one red blood cell. And here's another red blood cell. Dump out carbon dioxide and oxygen will go into the red blood cell. 
and then eventually this red blood cell will leave and this capillary will merge with the branch that goes back to the heart so i think i drew it here right okay so how do gases move here well oxygen is more concentrated here than in here so oxygen will go through the capillary and get to the blood carbon dioxide is more concentrated here than in here so the other flow will take place it's basically using diffusion powered by the concentration gradient overall there are about 300 million alveoli together they make up 100 meters squared of area for gas exchange now let's talk about some of the trends in this uh, pipe pathway first the pipe here ish are all surrounded by columnar epithelial cells these are epithelial cells that are like columns and they all have cilia and these cilia will move and uh, they will try to move some of the bad things like uh, uh, dust pathogen etc out the mouth and the nose but as you go deeper branch zero branch two down the path the cells are going to turn into cuboidal epithelial cells and cilia will decrease in the number and if you go even further down branch 16 all the way to branch 23 now these cells are non-cuboidal but uh, squamous so they're flat cells column blocks flat overall the thickness of the structure gets thinner and thinner and thinner in addition suppose this is the branch 17 division around here in the bronchiole of the branches up to branch 17 you can find alveoli type 1 cells but here deeper you find alveoli type 2 cells alveoli type 2 cells have two important functions one it secretes something called surfactant and the job of surfactant is to decrease the surface tension of the liquid here so that the alveoli don't collapse and another function of at2 is to uh, actually differentiate and become the cells that make the alveoli so at2s are progenitor cells themselves and lastly let me draw a quick chart here this is the branch zero this is the branch 23 and maybe we go a little bit further back to your nose etc so when you breathe in air speed is faster so this is the velocity of the air but then the branching will take place and the branches would get smaller small branch slower uh, fluid motion in the branch in this case fluid is the gas and then the gas speed is going to decrease in exchange the branching number increases so the surface area increases too and this exponential growth of the area results in this hundred square meter total area allowing you to do a lot of gas exchange so this is the area of the air and finally in addition to columnar epithelial cells cuboidal epithelial cells squamous epithelial cells at1 cells at2 cells you also have cells that secrete mucus and also uh, macrophages that help get rid of potential pathogen in anywhere in this path